AEW Unrestricted, the official podcast of All Elite Wrestling. I am one of your co-hosts, Aubrey Edwards, along with my other co-host, recently having had a birthday, Tony Schiavone. How are you doing, Tony? Aubrey, what's up, girl? Hey, uh, how are you? I'm doing great. Uh, surprisingly awake. Uh, third <laughs> cup of coffee. Uh, I don't know how many monsters you've had this morning so far. Number two. Mm. There we go. We're caffeinated. We're ready to go. And uh, luckily, we get to start our day with one of our wonderful, wonderful new friends and roster members, Miss Ruby Soho. How are you this morning? I'm wonderful. I'm so happy to be here, you guys. Happy birthday, Tony, or belated birthday. Thanks very much. You it, young it, son it. of a gun. <laughs> A lot of people say young son of a bitch, but thank you for oh, saying that. You know, um, I was just I was, I wasn't trying to get there. I know. No, she's kind. Of, she's kind. <laughs> the rest of us though. <laughs> we are so happy to have you with us, uh, Ruby, because you have uh, brought to us such a breath of fresh air. I mean, you mm -hmm. are so positive, such a a great person in the backstage area. Uh, I. Not the first person to say this, but by golly, welcome to AEW. Yes. Oh, Tony, stop. You made me kiss too early for me to cry. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've been for doing this for two minutes and I'm already like, mm, thank you oh, so man, much. Thank you. It, it's, it's true. <laughs> you've, uh, you've brought a lot of positivity backstage. And I, and, and I know uh, from hearing you talk, you've uh, not only in the ring, but backstage, you're really enjoying your time here in AEW. It's the best job in the whole world, Tony. It's just yeah. the best. I'm so happy to be here and to be a part of this team that we have. And it is a team. And that's that's probably my favorite part of it is that it feels like a team. And I'm just I'm so excited to, you know, be a part of the roster and just to see the growth of the company and and what everybody who, you know, started this and built this for somewhere for me to come and to be a part of. And to see where it goes from here, I'm just, I'm so excited to see how amazing it's going to be and how amazing it already is. So I'm going to actually try and get you to cry. Uh, oh God, not maliciously. Why, why? Uh, <laughs> just because now I'm like, oh, uh, Holy cow. No, uh, but you, you've you no. been here since uh, August and we'll get into <laughs> your debut in a little bit. But one of the things I love about Ruby is just how like much of a team player she is. I think she's been here literally like a month and she comes up to me and goes, hey, how are you? Do you need anything? Can I go get you coffee? And I'm sitting there in my head like, who the fuck am I? Like, <laughs> here's this girl. You're, you're Aubrey. This... That's who you are. <laughs> what are you talking about? Here's this girl with this storied <laughs> career. I think it was like we were in Queens and you were about to have the biggest match of your career and you're just like. <laughs> Oh, how are you? Can I get you coffee? I'm like, no, no, don't get me coffee. Focus on your you do like, so we're good. much though. You mean like <laughs> I like I see that, you know, I I I you know, obviously watch how the machine runs and everything. And you do so much. It's not, you know, you don't just come out and rough matches like you have your hand and doing so many things, running around 24 seven. We're all in team. All I, all I gotta do is rough matches. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so <laughs> I want, <laughs> I want to help if I can, because, you know, I don't, I don't think people realize, you know, you know, while we are, you know, the performers in, in a sense, like there's so many more things. There's so many more people that if we didn't have people like you doing as much as you do, like the machine wouldn't run, like we wouldn't have a product. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's super important that that's, that's noted and that's appreciated and that you have coffee if you need it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very much appreciated. Thank you very much. So of course. Uh, let's, let's get to your debut. Uh, AEW all out 2021 casino battle Royal coming out as the Joker. Uh, I want to talk about the crowd reaction and the reception to your entrance because I think they were chanting your name before your music even hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's probably like one of the best days of my life, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Like, um, it was super emotional. I went on such a roller coaster that day. Um, I was just on sensory overload for the entirety of the day. Um, obviously, there's a lot of anticipation. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I had been thinking about and hoping that would go perfectly and also realizing it's wrestling and nothing ever goes the way you think it's going to go. 
Um, so, you know, leading up to that moment, I was, I was really nervous and I, and I wanted everything to go the way that would, you know, make Tony happy. And, um, and obviously, you know, I hadn't gone by this name, you know, at, at that time. And so I was wondering, you know, if they would be receptive to that and if they would be receptive to me, you know, um, I'm, you know, the new kid on the block and, and I was the, you know, the Joker is such an important role, you know, in that match. And I was hoping that, you know, I could live up to, to the role um, that it was. So when they started chanting my name before I ever came out, it was so emotional. Like I looked at, I remember looking at everybody that was near the stairs and went, Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm like almost crying. And I was like, Oh my goodness. I have to go. Okay. Pull it together. Pull it together, Ruby. I got to go wrestle. I got to do stuff. And then, um, my favorite part that I will remember forever is, uh, uh, is Tony, uh, Tony Khan from behind the screen. As soon as he hears it, he goes, let's go. Screams at the top of his lungs. (laughs) Um, and, uh, it was it was awesome because I was just like, yes, yeah, my boss. And he's so behind me right now. And he's so he's happy already. And that makes me happy. Um, and then coming out there uh, to the reception that I got, that smile that was just ear to ear was so real and was so genuine. I, I just wanted to live in that moment forever um, because it was just it was like it was a, it felt like 11 years had like culminated to this moment. Or like I had, you know, in a sense, come home. Like this was a place where I felt like I belonged and the fans were, you know, my people. And I I felt like I I was home. So it was it was a, a really beautiful feeling that I'll never ever forget. It was a great moment for all of us, really. Your reaction, uh, or the fans' reaction, you coming out, your song that we're gonna talk about here <sighs> in just a moment, and uh, and the fact that you you won the casino battle royale. So uh, that oh, that made gosh. it even more special, right? That's crazy, right? It's yeah. my first day. Right. It's my first day, Tony. <laughs> <Right>. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. <sighs> it was so, uh, amazing. Talk, yeah, talk about going over in that because uh, you know you've got to you, backstage. You got to talk to a lot of people. You got to work out a lot of things, and you know battle royals are never easy. I mean, they really mm-hmm. aren't because you it was gotta chaotic. Kind of, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> that that whole day. I mean, just the, the you know the pay per view itself is 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 chaotic and it was you know it was historic pay-per-view that we did and that you know i got to debut on with along with you know brian danielson and adam cole like what um so i uh it was super chaotic you know backstage obviously there's so many women involved in this battle royal and then to be winning it and being the new girl i was really nervous um because i didn't I didn't want to step on any toes. I didn't want, I wanted kind of to earn, uh, earn my place and, you know, to, to prove that I wanted to be a part of the team and then that I was not here for myself. Like I wanted to, you know, assist in the elevation of the division as much as I could. Um, but everybody was super nice and super, um, respect, like respectful and sweet and understanding. And, um, and I, I, I was super grateful for that. I was shocked. I was shocked when I heard, and, uh, I, I was just like, I, I, this is my first day and I don't know how I'm going to top this. Like, how do I, how do I top How do, where do I go from here? And then of course, obviously grand slam happened and like, it just keeps like, I keep thinking that it can't get any bigger or better and it just keeps happening. So, uh, so yeah, it's just the, what's on the horizon is just so exciting to me. I've never been so excited and so in love with pro wrestling in my life. Yeah. Tony and I have been here two years and it continually keeps getting better and (laughs) the feeling doesn't really go away. So, uh, just fair warning. I uh, love hearing that. It's, it's going to get pretty wild. Uh, (laughs) yeah, you had mentioned first day winning battle Royal, which Mm -hmm. essentially gave you a chance at the world title. So you and Britt Baker, uh, I think it was the first time we had worked together actually. Uh, so. You and Britt Baker in the main event of Dynamite at Grand Slam, Arthur Ashe Stadium. Mm. 20,177 people. Uh, yeah, what did that mean to you? I I still I still can't really wrap my brain. I was there. It happened. I did it. And I still can't wrap my brain around it. To me, it, my, it malfunctions when I, I hear the fact that Brian Danielson and Kenny Omega 
had a match on that show and we were the main event that my, my, it malfunctions a little bit. And then I don't, I don't even know how to, how to process it. Um, it was incredible. And honestly, the fact that I had just gotten there, Tony, you know, had just obviously started working with me and for him to trust me that much to be able to be in that position for a, a probably, you know, our biggest dynamite, you know, to date, um, and you know, this stupid, like historic thing where we had never been wrestling and never been to this building before, um, and everything like that, um, for him to trust me to be able to deliver was, you know, an honor to me because I, I, I wouldn't blame him if he didn't, he, he, he knows of me, he knows of my work, but he doesn't, you know, he hadn't worked with me for a long time, but he did. And I, I, I didn't want to waste that. Like I was never been more nervous in my entire life, almost felt like I was going to throw up. Um, and I, I think I'm pretty sure I said that, like, I, I think you, you might've heard me say it at least probably 15, 20 times in the 20, locker room. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. I'm gonna puke. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna puke. I'm just gonna throw up everywhere. Um, I was like, what do you need from me in that match? And you're like, I just need you to be calm yeah. and not freak me out more than I already am freaking out. I'm like, I got you. I got I was you. On ne- yeah. Next level, <laughs> like next level nerves were shot. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously first time working with Brit, I hadn't, uh, I hadn't worked with her before I, I've, I've known her, you know, since she started, but we never like worked in in the ring together. So there was a lot of different, um, parts of it that, you know, I was super nervous about. And, uh, I was, I was really, really proud of what we did. And one of the things that I loved the most about it, um, I've said it before is that the fact that we were the main event, it wasn't that it was women were the main event. Like that wasn't like the the focal point or like the commodity of it. It was like, oh, they didn't make a big deal about the fact that it was a women's main event. They made a big deal about the fact that it was for a very important title and that it was two people that hadn't stepped into the ring like together before and that it was, it was just a big match. And that's the thing that I loved about it because it's, it, it, is becoming to where we can normalize the fact that the women are the main event. Like it's a normalized land. That's what, you know, to me, what in the industry as women, what we've always wanted is just to be on a level playing field to where it's just normal that, you know, we can be the main event sometimes. And it's not this big, huge deal. Like if that makes sense, what I'm trying to say, we want to be more than a checkbox. Like, Mm -hmm. yes, we want to to, because real equality is when, like you don't really think about it kind of as you mm-hmm. said, right? Yeah. So once it's at that point where it's no longer a bullet point to talk about yeah. and doing a match like that just gets us closer to that moment. 100%. So, yeah, and I, and they keep doing it. AEW keeps doing it. They, the women have been the main event, um, you know, a, a few times just even since I've been here and before I've been here. And it's not it's not the talking point of the match is the fact that we're women. It's it's the focal point of the match is the importance of the actual match itself. And I think that's really important and like the like the goal at the end of the day. We're talking with Ruby Soho and, and Ruby, I was going to ask you about going into that match against Britt and being the main event at Arthur Ashe Stadium and having Kenny and, and Danielson wrestle in the opening bout if you felt any pressure, but you already talked about your nerves being shot that day. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I, Especially so, after I watched Kenny and Brian. Yeah, I right. watched yeah. the match happen and I'm like, pfft, pfft. <laughs> like top this. Yeah, uh, right. do, do we just close the show now or right. <laughs> like what? The, like that is legendary, man. Like that's right. like match of the year status. Like what do I what do I do here? <laughs> right. Well, the good news is you didn't go on right after that match. Thank God. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Bless their heart. Yeah, like, I, I no. can't even remember who did, but I can't even know. Uh, no MJF. One heart. MJF? <laughs> Yep. Okay. Uh, well, there you go. No, I don't feel bad. <laughs> no, I don't either. No one feels bad. No one feels bad. So, did uh, you get to Arthur Ashes that that day? And you said you were nervous. And obviously, is there anything you normally do to mentally prepare for any type of match? And did you do anything special that day? Uh, so i I would love to be able to to say all the things that I do are the things that I want to do. Like I want to listen to music. I want to stretch. I want to like meditate. These are all things that I go in to almost every match, not just my important matches, almost every match. I go in saying, I'm going to do this today, but I never end up doing it <laughs> ever. I never, I like, I try to stretch, but it's usually like within like right before my music hits. 
Um, but I, uh, I pace a lot. Um, Aubrey probably knows this from just, Oh yeah. I, in the locker room, I'm just like and back and forth and this in a line pacing, pacing, and I'm going over everything in my head and, and, and just, you know, talking out loud thinking. And I think another thing I, I talk a lot when I'm nervous. And so I, I, I bless the girls in the locker room. I probably drive them nuts, especially, you know, that day I probably didn't shut up. Um, but I just, I just, I just pace. You're good. A lot. I've done that since, since the Indies, even when I was nervous, like I would just walk outside and I just, I just pace. Um, and, uh, that's at the extent of preparation. I think that I do, I would love to be better about it. I would love to like center myself and listen to music and do all that stuff. But the days are just so chaotic and hectic and you try to use every, minute before your music hits to your advantage um and uh so yeah it's something i'd like to be better about but i'm, I'm definitely not <laughs> we're talking with ruby soho we're going to talk about her song talk about the tbs championship and talk about how when she came back it was kind of a reunion of sorts because she knew a lot of people already here when we continue on unrestricted AEW Unrestricted with Ruby Soho, Tony Schiavone, and Aubrey Edwards. Good to have you with us, and thanks for being with us on all of our platforms here in All Lead Wrestling. We appreciate you as a fan, and I don't say that, just throw it away. I sincerely mean that. We're here because of you. Uh, and, Ruby, we uh, talked about your song by Rancid. Uh, I want to ask you about the song and how it all started and your friendship with Lars Fredrickson and Rancid and how that all led to this. I mean, I'm the luckiest girl in the whole world. <laughs> um, I honestly am, um, especially like with AEW and everything, you know, that happened, you know, following, you know, my release, I just genuinely feel like everything fell perfectly into place. Um, I have been a huge Rancid fan, you know, for years and years and years. Um, one of the first punk bands I ever listened to. Um, and Lars Fredrickson just like epitomized what a punk rocker was to me. Um, and he was just like, just when you saw him, he just like, he had this confidence about him and like, he just, he was just like unapologetically himself. And I, I admired that a lot. And, um, you know, he came, you know, a hero of mine. And then over the, the last few years, um, realizing that he is in fact a pro wrestling fan, which, you know, I've come to realize with a lot of like musicians that I respect are also pro wrestling fans, which is mind blowing to me, and but it makes it even cooler. Um, and over the last few years, um, you know, through social media and stuff, uh, we've linked up a little bit. And uh, in in previous, you know, pay per views and stuff that I've done, um, I emulated him in um, in a, in a gear that I did, and I asked him if it was okay if I was if I would do it, and he he was like, oh, I, I'm honored, so cool. Let me know if you need anything. And so like we kind of like became friends. Um, he'd send me rancid merch. I'd send him wrestling merch, um, and stuff like that. And, uh, once my release happened, I, you know, wasn't going to do any, uh, podcasts or interviews or anything like that. I was just kind of, kind of go social media silent for a little while. But when Lars Fredrickson asked you to do his podcast, you do his podcast. <laughs> um, right. so he, he asked me to do, um, the podcast and I had kind of been thinking a lot about, what I wanted to be called going forward. Um, and, uh, you know, we spoke about it on the podcast and I told him, you know, Ruby had come from, you know, his song, you know, Ruby Soho, that's where the inspiration came from. And, uh, he just super casual nonchalant goes, why don't you just go by that? And I just looked at him and I was like, didn't know that was an option, <laughs> but, uh, now that you mention it, he's yeah. like, oh yeah, you know, that, uh, that you, you could definitely do that. He's like, I can get on the phone right now and, uh, text the guys and see if we can, uh, look into the music for you. We can get that done in 10 minutes and he's super casual, but this is like life changing to me. Right. He's super casual. And I'm trying not to just like melt down into my seat and I'm losing my mind. I was like, this is the coolest thing. Cause it's like being like knighted in, in like the punk world. Like I'm knighted by like the coolest dude in the world and and being given this incredible name and the most amazing song i'm sorry for anybody but the, i have the coolest entrance music in professional wrestling right, right now um and it, it inherently always gets stuck in everyone's heads and sure does people, <laughs> it, it's it's ridiculous and right. uh 
Uh, but because it, it's just that great of a song. And it honestly, it, it gives to me what I have always wanted with entrance music. And I don't think that I have ever had. And it's this, this charge right before I go out. Um, and, and when I get out on stage that, um, that just empowers me right before my match and, and, and brings me to like the level that I want to be when I enter the ring. And then to top that off with the AEW fans singing it with me, right. it makes it even better. I just feel like I'm in a concert every time I come out and we're just air guitar and just having the time of our lives. So, um, I'm a very lucky girl. Yeah. You know, uh, Audrey, before you hit her with the next question, it, it's, and, and it's probably silly of me to say this because I, you haven't been here even a year, but it's become an iconic song in AEW, much like uh, Judas, uh, much like Wild Thing is. It's mm-hmm. one of those things when it hits, people want to sing along with it. Mm-hmm. And not many in wrestling can say that, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. it's it's really, really cool. And it's an honor, honestly, to be able to to use that and to uh, and to have them sing it with me. It's just, uh, it's the best feeling. You'd mentioned a little bit about epitomizing punk rock and mm-hmm. Lars and whatnot in your gear. And I want to touch on uh, a couple of patches you actually have on your jacket for okay. your, your, your buddies, Liv Morgan and Sarah uh, Logan. Yeah. Uh, how, how did that come about? Um, so when Sarah first got released, um, Liv and I both wanted to take her with us every time we entered the ring at, every single time we always wanted to have her with us because, you know, who we were, you know, as a team wouldn't be anything without each other like that, you know, we were sisters on screen and off screen. Like those are my best friends, um, in the whole world. And they are the reason I'm who I am today. I'm the performer. I am today. I'm the woman I am today is because those of those two girls. And we're so different that we just complimented each other really well and um and just brought out the best i think in each other and so we always wanted to carry her with us so i i had the patch um both of us had the patch on our jacket to represent sarah and it was over our heart and uh and uh when i was coming in to debut for aew um i realized i wanted to carry that on and i wanted to bring them with me uh always because i i always have them you know I always have them here, but, um, I wanted to make sure that I, I brought them both with me to the ring. Cause they are, you know, they were my strength and they still are my strength. Um, so I, I thought it was really important, you know, with having all these patches that have a lot of meaning to me, those are the ones that mean the most because I, I take my girls with me, um, always. So, yeah, I get it. Uh, I, I really do. I, I know it means a lot to you and it means a lot to them. I, now we got there a TBS, uh, championship tournament coming up now by the as we record this uh you have won your first round match we don't know when it's going to drop so that's as far as we're going to go on this but Mm -hmm. uh you've been uh, in wrestling for 11 years Mm -hmm. what would it mean for you to be a champion of tbs i'm trying not to get emotional (laughs) <laughs> I've already, I've, I've, I've said that three, three, podcast. four times already. Yep, yeah. yep, this whole yep, podcast is just Ruby trying it's to just, not It's just me trying to hold yeah. back <laughs> tears yeah. uh, this whole time. Uh, it, it would, uh, it, it would definitely, it would mean everything. I, I know right. that's kind of, um, kind of um, corny to say, but it would, sure. it would honestly mean everything to me. Right. Um, I have, I have never been trusted and never been in a position where I have, held uh, a title on national television in the entirety of the time I've spent um, on it in, in the last few years. And um, to, especially to be able to go through this tournament with, you know, some of the most talented women that I have ever met and stepped across the ring from um, is, you know, an honor in and of itself, these matches that, you know, the bracket has set up are ones that I dream about and like ones that I like, like I, I've said it before, like if the, the TBS title is not, you know, incentive enough to move on in the tournament, the matches I want to have are 
our, our incentive as well. Cause like, I am just so excited and so, and so anxious just to step into the ring with these women and learn from them and, and have them, you know, bring out a different kind of fight in me and, and for me to do the same. Um, so for me to, to be able to, you know, kind of make history within, you know, this company, um, that I, you know, now I hold so dear to my heart and that has really, you know, lit a fire and a, and new love for professional wrestling and to be able to make history and, and represent that, com- that, that company in this new title that is already groundbreaking within, you know, the women's wrestling industry, um, would be a huge honor and would be kind of like validation for 11 years of a lot of, pardon my French, a lot of shit. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's quite a lot. And I mean, we talk a lot about already, you know, women's wrestling, women's mm-hmm. representation in wrestling, and, you know, combining that with your career, you spent some time in Japan at mm-hmm. Stardom. Mm-hmm. And I want to know, uh, is any of that time you spent there, has that influenced your style or move set in any way? Uh, definitely. Um, I, I don't think I realized the level of the level of toughness that some women had until I stepped into the ring and stardom until I went to that dojo, I had no idea. Like those are some of the toughest, most athletic, most hardworking women I have ever met in my entire life. And I was intimidated as hell um i was like like my first day i'm like oh my god i'm here for three months like oh oh but honestly it 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 definitely toughened me up you know and i was wrestling dudes like i was i was doing intergender matches at the time and i i I didn't i had no idea what tough was until i i met these women like tougher than most men that i had met these women were and they they busted their ass And, um, so that alone, you know, toughened me up for sure. And, you know, getting to learn from a lot of these women and getting to grow and to be able to adapt to a new style and a new culture and everything like that was really amazing. And it was, you know, some of the most, you know, one of the biggest turning points, I think in my career, Mm -hmm. as far as, um, the confidence within my style to be able to, um, you know, bring kind of more of a, a, a strong style strike, um, into my moveset and, and into what I do. Um, cause I try to pull a little bit from kind of everywhere that I've been. Um, and it definitely, uh, it definitely helped a lot and it was, whew, it was an amazing experience. Uh, Ruby, you posted a, uh, a Shikara pick, mm-hmm. uh, when uh, backstage, so many familiar faces when you arrived here, right? Mm, yeah, <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's really, it's really awesome to be with so many of my friends that we grinded for so many years where, you know, we're driving 12 hours, you know, and cars are breaking down and, and, you know, the fans, there's not a whole lot of fans in the audience, but we're still trying to put on the best show that we possibly can. Um, and not just from Shakara, from, from all kinds of different companies that I worked for on the independence. I, I, I felt like I was, I was new, but I, it was, and it was all new, but it was familiar at the same time um, because I had known so many people there. And um, one of the things that I love about, cause I I'm very proud to have been an independent wrestler. Um, I feel like it has kind of made me obviously who I am today. And it's, and that grind is something I'm very proud to have, to have done for, you know, six years before I even, you know, entered um, national television. Um, but one thing I do love about AEW is it has an independent feel to it, mm-hmm. even, even down to the crowd. I feel like right. the energy um, in the arenas has like almost like a, an intimate bingo hall feel, but with a huge arena environment, if, if that makes sense. Like you yeah. feel totally. like the fans are right there, even though they're really far away, you feel like they're right there with you. And even in, in, in the back, like, on the independence, we weren't, you know, trying to, you know, come after each other's spot. We were just trying to put on the best show possible. And that's how I feel 
the AEW is it's a team and we're just trying to put on the best show possible. Nobody's coming after anybody's spot. We're just trying to put on this product that we're all very, very proud of. So um, it definitely, to me, it has that indie indie wrestling feel, which is one that I love so much um, where we're trying to prove ourselves to, and, 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 but with, you know, the, the arena and the national TV exposure um, environment. I love it. I get it. I, uh, and Aubrey, I want you, uh, we're going to go to a break here in a minute, but I get it because those fans have been with you the entire time, right? Mm-hmm. During the independence, mm-hmm. they're the fans that now are coming to the big arenas, right? So they've mm-hmm. been investing in you. So I get all that. I get how, Absolutely I get right. it. I get how it, it has the bingo hall uh, mentality, but on a bigger stage. I get yeah. that. Yeah, which is beautiful. Cool. It's yeah. it's what we all dream of as independent wrestlers. Like this, right. this place is what, like, if we had to like dream of like a perfect place, like, Oh, one day we're all going to be able to go to this, this company and we're going to be on national television, but we're going to have like a say where we can be ourselves. And like, our boss is going to be super cool. Mm. And like, we're going to have a lot of fun and wrestling to wrestle our friends and like put on amazing <laughs> matches. Like, yeah, wouldn't that be cool? And then yeah. like, it just like appeared, like it just yeah, it became it a reality. And, and yeah. we're going to be in the main event in front of 20,000 people in New York City. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Wild, wild. <laughs> All Bingo right. Hall times a thousand. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, we're talking to Ruby Soho here on AEW Unrestricted. Coming up, we got lots and lots of fan questions. Oh. This is AEW Unrestricted. Tony and Aubrey here with Ruby Soho, and it's time for fan questions. And I was very excited to ask this one. Uh, so, Ash uh, Trayvon on Twitter wants to ask about particular moment at all out uh i know that as refs backstage and we're trying to figure out like okay when whoever wins who's going to go in and uh hold the person's hand and bryce immediately says i want to do it because ruby's my friend and we're like oh yeah no no problem and i mean you you're obviously there uh but there's that great moment of you just looking up bryce going hi bryce and then hugging him and i think like that is now in the intro for the show which is just so wonderful like (laughs) because <laughs> i'll be standing in the ring like wait a minute this is great but like the the human nature of it right like we kind of talked a little bit about you know everyone kind of coming together broken down cars indie shows bingo halls all that mm. uh what was uh this, this question says the sight of ruby hugging bryce after her introduction at full gear is an iconic moment uh were there any other similar moments backstage that night seeing anybody in the locker room that you hadn't seen in a long time First of all, that moment will go down in history as probably one of my favorite moments <laughs> in professional it's wrestling. It's so good. It's so, it's so good. good. And I, 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 I don't know that I've ever elaborated on on the exact like moments that like how that transpired. Um, after I won, I'm like freaking out, excited, loving every minute of it. Like, and I just see stripes slide in, and because you know you know bryce has been a friend of mine for for a long time and he's known me since you know since very early on and and seen like the the journey and i've i've seen his as well and he's helped me so much um i just i thought to myself i was just like i hope this is bryce and then i looked up and i see that (laughs) smile on his face and i looked at him and i go hi bryce and he looks at me and this is the part that nobody knows he looks at me he goes you can hug me if you want. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I just wrapped my arms around him and hugged him so tight because I wanted to. I know he knew I wanted to, but I didn't know if I was allowed to. But it's oh, yeah. said, you can hug me if you want. I was like, okay. And I just, I, I it was just <laughs> the best moment of like, it was like the, like I said, that day was just perfect in every way. And that, that the end of that match, having that moment happen. And the fact that it's in the intro is even better. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was amazing. Amazing um, moment. I'm glad we captured it and I'm glad yeah, we, it was, it was incredible. There. Um, yeah. definitely. I want to say the, the other moments that kind of, that kind of held up, um, held up to it were, uh, you know, Sarah came to the show um and surprised me with with her and her son right. um which was the best surprise i could possibly ask for like that it was, it's so much to ask you know a new mother to bring her newborn and fly her newborn to chicago but she did that for me and i'm i'm so grateful for it so to to hug her afterwards was amazing um and then uh 
the other one was Eddie. Um, I've known Eddie for a number of years, probably the same amount of time that I've known Bryce. Um, one of my best pals, like he's, he's the best. And, uh, to see him, um, I hugged him afterwards and like, he's like tough guy, Eddie always like tough guy. And he's like, right. hey, yeah, it's great. And then I'm looking at him and I was like, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I'm super excited. And he's like, and I can see a little bit, just like a glimmer of like emotion <laughs> from him where he's like, I'm just, I'm just so proud of you. And I wept like, as soon as like, you know what I mean? Like when you see like the strongest people that, you know, kind of show that glimmer of vulnerability, I, I lost it immediately. I just hugged him and just cried. And I was, and it was just like, it was, it was, so that was, a that's a moment that I, I'll never forget. Like, yeah, he'll probably kill me for saying it, that he was he was being sweet and nice at one point. But, you know, yeah. he, he was he was, you know, there's a lot of emotional parts of Eddie Kingston. And, and one of those was the same night we're talking about you main eventing at uh, Arthur Ashe Stadium. Mm -hmm. He being from Yonkers, he came mm -hmm. out with me to do elevation matches yeah. and he sat down and he looked around and saw 20,000 people in Yonkers that he was going to wrestle later on that night in. Right. And he was like emotional. And I mm -hmm. said, you all right? He went, uh, I, I guess I am. I don't know. I mean, he was like. Eddie Kingston <laughs> speechless. <laughs> right. Eddie Kingston speechless. speechless is Absolutely. a very, <laughs> very, very rare occurrence. Okay. It happens. <laughs> That's what Are I the, love about AEW is like you, right. the, the fans get to see the, the, like the rawest emotion from us. Right. Because yeah. we are so passionate about this product. They get to see it's the real. rawest emotion of us from us when we come to our hometowns, when we perform in front of, you know, people who genuinely care about us and who want to see us succeed. And, and it's just, it, they get to see this real raw emotion from us. And I think that's why our fans are so great is because they relate to that authenticity um, of us because we care so much about just this product as a whole. The next question is one that I'm glad I get to ask, because I was kind of pulled into this in okay. Miami uh, okay. unexpectedly. This oh, comes no. from official ego, all ego, Ethan page. <laughs> ask her ask her about Bucky's. I'm so angry. I'm so <laughs> well, this is a point of angry. contention. Backstage. I thought you said you picked the good question. Oh, I thought you said I, you picked the good one. Oh. It, was a, it was a good question for me because oh. I walked backstage and Ruby said, let me ask you a question. I said, okay. She said, Bucky's, Wawa, or Sheets. And being from the Atlanta area, I throw QT in there, Quick Trip in there as well because it's kind of like it. And I said, nah, I don't like Bucky's. I said, I'd rather go Wawa. So I don't know what your, I can't remember what your reaction was. Uh, my but. reaction when you said you didn't like Bucky's, I hugged you. But then oh. you said you liked Wawa and then I was angry. <laughs> so <laughs> okay. it, was, it was a roller coaster of emotions. Okay. It was the same thing with Aubrey. I did the same thing. But my favorite part though, the reason yeah. I love Aubrey as much as I do is because she is just as passionate about it. I yeah. specifically asked Ethan Page to ask her about Bucky. <laughs> you did, you did. That she's just as passionate in. about her hatred for Bucky's as I am. Um, <laughs> and she she did not disappoint by any sense of the word. Okay. And so, yes. So I, you know what? I'm not a fan of Bucky's. All right. The reason for it is okay. I am one of those people. If I go to a gas station. I would like everything at my convenience. You know, I right. want good mm -hmm. food. I want the energy, energy drinks that I want, things like that. Like being on the road as much as I have, um, that convenience of having everything very close in close proximity is very important to me. Got to it. me, Bucky's is a flea market and a gas station. <laughs> I was going to so say a sorry. Costco, at a, a Costco yeah, at a gas Costco, station, right? flea market, whatever right. you want to call it. Right. It is just, it's too much. It's too right. much. And this has gone on for so like for way longer <laughs> than I ever anticipated for way longer. It has gotten out of control. People have made a logo of the Bucky's beaver with my tattoos and piercings and hair <laughs> on it. That's it's a so thing good. that's happening right now. Um, so I, I, I'm not a huge fan of Wawa just because I lived in Florida for a long time and I just, uh -huh. I, I just don't care for it. Uh -huh. Um, but sheets, um, is near and dear to my heart because I okay. love the food at sheets. Right. I love deep fried mac and cheese bites. Woo. I love mozzarella sticks on a burger. Like, come on now. It's just <laughs> the best. And it, it's super convenient. It has all the best stuff that like you could ever want. It has, um, uh, fruity pebbles, rice, Krispie treats, like 
best. So I am, I'm a sheets freak for sure. Um, it has gotten to a point to where sheets has reached out to me, <laughs> like ah. she's reached out to me and messaged me and was like, Hey, thanks for your support. I appreciate it. I was like, this is, <laughs> this is turning into a war. <laughs> it's been backstage in AEW. It is turning into an all out war. And one of which I'm losing very, very, very much. So I'm losing this war. Not, there's not a lot of sheets freaks. I don't think, I don't think there's enough sheets to be able to properly impress like um so you know we got to get on spreading the love of sheets but it has turned into a whole thing so i've never been to a sheets which is part of the reason i chose wawa but Fair. i mean you shouldn't have to be able to buy a onesie at a gas station that just doesn't make any goddamn sense or bedazzled uh, cowboy hats what are you doing it doesn't matter it doesn't make sense <laughs> anyway but that? when when you and i go to a town where going to a sheets is convenient we'll need to go one so you can see my percent. first real time. I would love that. <laughs> I would be honored to be a yep. part of your first sheets experience. I would be honored. Oh my God. Because uh, it, it will change your life. Change try your life. a quick trip. <laughs> try a quick trip. It's for you. Uh, we're uh, going okay. to be in Gwinnett soon. They're all oh, over the right. place. And they are, they, they were recently in Kansas city and in St. Louis they are all through Missouri. So uh, okay. they're kind of like, they're kind of like a sheets, but they're just in a different part of the country. That's okay. All. All right. All right. All right, Tony. We can, we, we can got, get behind that. We, yep. uh, thank you. We'll expand the gas station horizon. I'm not mad about it. <laughs> That's right. This is point of contention. Who knew that uh, asking about gas stations would lead mm -hmm. to like a five minute discussion? This is deep, man. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> All right. Uh, question from Lamora. Uh, what's the biggest adjustment for you in your transition from your old job to your new one? Is it in ring, backstage, et cetera? Probably, I, I, I think maybe in ring, I would say, um, I, I mean, it's, it's all an adjustment because it's, it, they're two completely different places. Um, and you know, it's two completely different environments. Um, but I think in ring is, is where I've been, you know, tested the most, um, because I have a lot longer matches than I am accustomed to. Um, and, uh, it's, it's been a long time since I've been pushed to the level that I have just been pushed to in the last few months. And I'm looking forward to being pushed to, you know, continuously. So um, I think, you know, my cardio has definitely been one of the things that's been tested the most, um, you know, you know, since I've, I've been to AEW. Um, and I think too, I am still waiting like i said i'm still waiting for like it to be too good to be true i'm like god is there gotta be something wrong here like i gotta I, one day something's gonna happen i'm like yep here we go but like i it's not it doesn't ever happen and i don't think it's ever going to happen but like i have that mindset still so i'm that's another adjustment of me just instead of just waiting for something to go wrong for me to just enjoy it and have a good time <laughs> uh so i think that's uh, mentally that's definitely a, a huge adjustment um of just trying to like protect myself, I guess, and prepare myself instead of just enjoying myself, but which I think I'm, I'm getting to that point where I'm just, I'm having a great time and, and I'm, you know, getting to work with new people and, and have new stories and new experiences. So yeah, that's been a, a big adjustment for sure. Okay. Moving on to a different uh, topic at, uh, at Vicky does stuff. Vicky does stuff wants to know. I just want to hear the story of how she got her cute hairless cat. Ooh. My cute hairless cat, Bambi. Yeah. I love her. She's probably upstairs screaming somewhere. Um, so I have wanted uh, a Sphinx for a very, very long time. Um, and uh, I, uh, I wanted a cat and I wanted something. It's so funny that I, I wanted something that kind of embodied both of my dogs in combination. It's so weird. So I have a Sharpay named Hoovy and I have a Corgi named Barney. And the kind of Sphinx that I have is called a Bambino, which means that they have really long bodies and little tiny legs. And so, um, like a Corgi. yeah, like a Corgi and right. but she's super wrinkly with all of her skin, like my Sharpay. So she is a perfect combination of the both of them sassier than both of them put together. Right. Um, I was, when I was living in Florida, I found this woman, um, and I, I'm always super nervous about breeders, especially with like very specific, like unique, um, breeds of even dogs or cats. Um, you can get scammed a lot. You can get people who, you know, do 
um, puppy mills and things like that. It's just, it right. gets very messy. So I, I always get nervous about that. So I found this woman, um, on Facebook and she was, uh, she was just a few, uh, a few hours away from me where I was living in Orlando at the time. And the thing that, um, I noticed the most about, about this particular reader was she, so Bambi, um, was the runt of her litter. And so she's fought like five pounds. She's about this big and she's not going to get any bigger. And she kept Bambi for, um, to continue to breed her further, but because she never grew past her where she's at, she knew that it would, it would make her very, very uncomfortable if she bred her because she was so small. So it showed me that this breeder actually cares about the, the animals that she has. And she said, well, I can't breed her. She's about a year and a half. I can't breed her um, because she's not growing anymore. So, and I immediately snatched her right up and she hated my dogs at first, hated (laughs) them. Um, But um, now she, she cuddles up with them. Um, My Corgi is in love with her, follows her around all the time, but yeah, I got a real freak show going on over here. No, it's great. that's what all those those animals and two and a half horses. I'm just a just a free wow. show. Love it. That's right. You live you live off in the woods somewhere <laughs> in a magical place with oh, tons yeah. of animals. <laughs> Freaking the punk rock Snow White over here. What do we got going on? <laughs> I love that. Uh, so last question before we okay. before we send you on your way. Uh, El Barto on Twitter asks: In 20 years, what do you want the legacy of Ruby Soho to be? What emotion do you want the fans to feel when looking back at your career? Holy cow! Pretty deep. I don't think I've ever been asked such a powerful question in my life. Yeah. Like that's an intense question. Like you know, you 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 ask like what you want to leave behind, but like in 20 years, how do the feeling I want people to get when they hear about me? Wow. Uh, Good question, man. Um, I, I think one of the emotions that if, if for the fans, I want people to, uh, to remember me and think of security within themselves. Um, I have struggled with all kinds of in, like insecurity with who I was, with who I was as a wrestler, as a woman, as, you know, as a person and, um, and wondering if I needed to change based off of what the industry wanted or what sold. And uh, one thing that I'm, I feel very proud of that I have tried to do is to never, even when I was pressured with those insecurities, I, I tried to stay the most authentic version of myself, even if I didn't think it was what was going to sell. Cause I knew that if I tried to be anything else, it was going to be glaringly transparent. Like this is not her, like she's, this is not her. And I've, I've done it in, in my career a, a, a few times, but I've always reverted back to, to, to me. So, um, to, so hopefully even a sense of confidence or security or, um, not conforming. I hope that that is something that I've tried to resonate with my fans. Um, with and and hopefully you know uh given them uh and a, a reason to to stay who they are and to who they to what truly makes them happy and and without having to be pressured by outside influences society family members friends whatever and to just be the most authentic version of themselves is 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 what i hope that i leave behind um and as far as the locker room goes i just i hope that I like, we all want to leave the locker room better than when you got there. And I hope that, you know, I can leave professional wrestling one day having, you know, helped in some, in some way, whatever, whatever that may be. Um, even if it's just one, one person or, or whatever, um, I, I hope that I can, I can make a difference. Ruby, it's, it's been great talking to you. Thanks for being a genuine person. We love you. We appreciate you. you. We really do. (laughs) We really, really do. Tony, you're the best. Yeah, we appreciate your time here. By the way, you can follow her on Instagram and Twitter at Real Ruby Soho. And don't forget to listen and follow us, AEW Unrestricted for free, wherever you get your podcasts. Check out the video episode, and you can see Ruby tearing up many, many times (laughs) on this. But it's authentic. Fighting back back those tears. Fighting back those tears. But it's authentic. (laughs) And and again, Ruby, thanks a lot. It's great being able to work with you. You're a delight. Mm -hmm. And, uh, continued success. We know we're going to be seeing a lot of you. 
Thank you guys right. so much. I'm honored to be a part of it. Thank you so much Thanks. for having me. Uh, Aubrey. You can watch AEW Elevation Monday nights, AEW Dark on Tuesdays, both on YouTube, and then you can watch AEW Dynamite Wednesdays, uh, 8 o'clock, 7 central, and then Rampage uh, on TNT, 10 o'clock. Uh, eventually, Dynamite will move to TBS January 5th, so uh, look out for that because we're freaking taking over. We're everywhere, uh, Bingo man. Hall times a thousand. We're, we're taking Love it. over. <laughs> Love it. Bingo Hall Arena. Thank you so Love much. It. <laughs> Bingo Hall Arena. Thank you so much, Ruby. I'm Aubrey Edwards with my co-host, Tony Schiavone. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.